Welcome back. You're still tuned into Midcap Radar. The next management on the show is Aeroflex Industries, reported a decent set of quarter three earnings. Asad Daud, who is the MD of Aeroflex Industries, is joining us now to discuss the earnings fine print and the outlook going forward. Asad, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, it's a big increase that we are seeing on a YOY basis if we talk about quarter three and also on a nine-month basis. Revenues are up 200%. You have seen EBITDA margin expansion of almost 400 basis points. Uh, uh, and in terms of the PAT as well, that one is up around 49%. And if we talk about the quarter three numbers as well, there is a profit growth of 75%. Uh, so if you can give us a sense of how much did capacity expansion lead to the increase in revenues, you are on a capacity expansion spree. There is one which is coming up in quarter four as well. Um, if you can give us a sense of revenues led by capacity expansion and the outlook going forward. So yes, we have increased our capacity from uh, from 11 million meters per annum to 12 and a half million meters per annum. That is already commissioned, and we are in the process of increasing our capacity from 12 and a half to 13 and a half, uh, which will be completed by March of this year. Uh, uh, so. In terms of our revenue, so the real impact of the capacity expansion would happen in in this quarter and the next financial year. Uh, most of the the gains of the capacity expansion you, you will see going forward. Also, in the next financial year, we are planning to increase our capacity from 13 and a half million meters to 16 and a half per million meters per annum. Okay, uh, Asa, thanks for joining us. This is Pavitra. So, like you're mentioning, the capacity expansion plan definitely seems to be on track. But tell us that, you know, since you're expecting the financial impact to really show up now, uh, what is the kind of revenue that you expect on account of this capacity addition to come through in the, you know, coming few quarters? And also, once all of this capacity is on stream, what is the peak kind of revenue that you see coming through? So, uh... In terms of the capacity uh, that will be completed in March, I think the impact you will see in the next financial year. And for the capacity that we are planning to build up in the next financial year, the real impact of uh, that will be seen in the next financial year after that. Also, we have a new project, which is of metal bellows, which will be commissioned in the next financial year. So the real impact of all our projects and all our expansion and CapEx plans, you will see in the financial year of FY25-26. Where you'll no, see I the real that. growth in terms of and all. Yeah. I got that. I want to know what is the quantum of that financial impact that we'll see if you can help us with some numbers there. I understand that will come through in the next financial year. But uh, what kind of, uh, you know, increase are you expecting? So over the past uh, three to four years, we have uh, grown at a CHR of about 20 to 25% on the top line. And we expect in the next uh, three to four years also, to have this uh, similar line of growth and I think our projects and our capacity expansion would help us in aiding that. Okay, so are you looking at a 35% plus growth that you've seen so far and something that you had indicated earlier and margins between 22 to 24%? Uh, is that a target that you'll be able to achieve? So yeah, so uh, in terms of uh, margin, uh, yes, our, um, our margin expectation over the next three to four years uh, would be to, to, to take it to 24 to 25%. In terms of uh, revenue, so uh, in the last quarter, we had a slight uh, dip. If you compare, uh, you know, sequentially, the reason was because of the Red Sea crisis that happened, especially in the last uh, 10 to 15 days of December. So in terms of uh, growth, in terms of the overall revenue in the next uh, three to four years, we are expecting about uh, 20 to 25% growth over the next four years in terms of the top line. But our focus more would be in, in growing the top line as well as more focus on the bottom line as well. Okay, if you can just clarify, how much of an impact do you think you've seen on account of this crisis that you were just mentioning in the Red Sea? So, uh, approximately to give you a ballpark figure, I think the impact is somewhere around 15% of our uh, revenue uh, of the last quarter, which was impacted uh, due to this uh, crisis. And a certain percentage of uh, revenue for the current quarter also would be impacted because the implications have gone on in the month of January as well. Okay. And how does that uh, pan out for your working capital? Because working capital has been an issue. Your working capital days were higher as well. The last number that we know in terms of your working capital has been around 70 to 80 days. Um, has that come down or will you see that continuing to be impacted because of uh, Red Sea crisis? Uh, in terms of the working uh, capital, so uh, our working capital has increased only slightly. 
uh, you know, our finished goods has increased significantly because of the issue of the Red Sea. But what we have done is that we have reduced our uh, raw material inventory. Uh, so, uh, you know, last year, almost 95% of our uh, stainless steel uh, coil was being imported. But now in this nine months, uh, less than 50% of our coil is imported. So we have re reduced our dependence on imports and this has led to a reduction in the raw material inventory. So overall our inventory has not grown by that much. Okay, so what is the uh, working capital days right now and how much has inventory reduced by in that? So, uh, in terms of uh, working capital days is about uh, approximately 100 uh, days overall uh, working uh, capital cycle in inventory has has remained the same on on a total uh, level our raw material inventory has gone down by about 15 days but uh, on the contrary our finished goods inventory has gone up by about 12 days so overall our inventory levels is more or less the same Okay, so inventory levels more or less the same. I'm just going to ask you one question on, you know, what we can expect going forward as well. Because earlier you had mentioned that you are looking to capture markets in a lot of these, uh, you know, newer segments like sprinklers, like the solar space, semiconductors. Uh, what's going on with that and what is the plan uh, with respect to those segments? So in this uh, nine months of this, uh, you know, financial year, we have increased our sales from the sprinkler the business uh, almost by uh, 30 to 40 percent as compared to last year. Also, we are in the process of developing uh, a product, especially for the, the EV space uh, uh, that, that is also related to uh, safety in terms of fire. So uh, that is under development right now. And I think uh, the uh, the sales from, the, from that particular uh, uh, product would come in the next financial year. And in terms of the, uh, the aerospace industry, so we have already started our discussions with the tire one uh, suppliers uh, to the aerospace industry to to develop certain specific uh, products for them. Right. Okay. All right, Asad. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us today and giving us all those details. So that's the word coming in from Aeroflex. Uh, uh, the company has reported decent numbers. The working capital continues to be an issue, and they said that Red Sea issues have impacted their revenues by 15% in quarter three, and this is something which could continue in quarter four as well. With that, we'll take your leave in this edition of Midcap Radar, but do stay tuned. Your stocks when we return with all the market action and your queries as well.